I'm tired of all this fluff and BS clickbait. No one is giving it to you straight. And no one who's built a legitimate business and sold over $500 million is weighing in. It's just a bunch of new sellers, novice people who sell a couple thousand dollars a month pushing you into their Discord group or their program. Yeah, we're fixing it. Here's some real, no BS, no fluff explanation of how to make a lot of money and more importantly, profit selling a long term sustainable Amazon business. So first off, why are people throwing in the towel and quitting Amazon? Well, if you look at social media, you'll see some repeat offenders who used to sell drop shipping programs and then sold FBA programs and are now selling TikTok programs and they're all over the place. There's no consistency because they have trouble making money in the business models that they're teaching. So they keep jumping around. Now with Nike being restricted for a lot of their products and people getting section three violations, people think that Amazon is dead when really they're just navigating it incorrectly. There's so much misinformation out there and the fact of the matter is those that are teaching online don't have a solid business foundation. They haven't built the processes or infrastructure and yet they're teaching. It's completely incorrect. It's invalid. I mean, we've scoured the web, we've scoured social media, we've looked at some of these YouTube videos and what they're showing you will get you banned from selling on Amazon. As a matter of fact, now is a better time to start selling on Amazon than ever before. When we were starting this 10 years ago, it was the wild, wild west. Amazon didn't provide you with guidelines. There wasn't insight. There wasn't the tools, the data, the analytics that you can grab nowadays to really thrive and grow a business. It was extremely hard. So nowadays there's access to tools and resources and all of this information available to you, as long as you're following the right people, that it's easier to grow a large business today than it ever was before. So let's dive into a little bit of the data because Amazon's a phenomenal opportunity. 700 billion, let me repeat that, $700 billion is the annual revenue of Amazon. There's a ton of opportunity there. 60% of that, so $480 billion is sold by everyday people like you and I. Two out of every $5 spent online is spent on Amazon. That means one out of every $5 spent online is spent and sold by people like me. And if you wanna get started on Amazon, Amazon people like you. And here's the facts. Amazon's removing the poor sellers, the sellers that are navigating outside of the terms of service. They're removing them from their platform, which creates more opportunity for people like you and I who are navigating correctly to grow monster Amazon businesses and make a lot of money to change your life. You gotta stop listening to the whiners if you are. There's a lot of negative information out there, but it's not factual. The fact is 10 years ago when we started, it was a smaller marketplace, third party sellers, that means sellers like myself, only had 30% of that marketplace. Today, that marketplace has tripled and third-party sellers have 60% of the marketplace. Clearly, there's a lot more opportunity today than there ever was. Don't listen to all the crybabies. Listen to people who've been doing it for a long time. The people who are transparent and are still doing it. And what's gonna happen next is that those whiners that are complaining about Amazon who are selling a course, they're gonna leave and start their next course. And we're we're still going to be here selling $65 million a year. And helping people like you do it the right way. So here's the stuff you shouldn't do. There's this guy who a lot of you are probably familiar with on social media, and he was selling a bunch of stolen goods. And because he was selling these stolen goods to everyday Amazon sellers, dozens of people got their accounts suspended and lost hundreds of thousands of dollars selling these stolen goods on Amazon, as well as got their accounts deactivated. And a lot of those sellers, they reached out to Eric and myself and they were trying to see if there was a way that they could pivot and get their account back. But unfortunately, they didn't verify the information that they were getting from that social media fraud and they didn't vet their suppliers because they weren't taught the proper way of building a business. So here are some things that you might see some people telling you to do, but you should definitely avoid. Drop shipping on Amazon, where you're shipping products from other marketplaces to customers in the same box that they're shipped from from those other retail spaces. That's against terms of service. You see a lot of people telling you to do that. It's not allowed. You will get banned. Shipping 
labeling fraud, where you're paying discounted rates for labels because you're manipulating the weights and the dimensions of your boxes. You'll hear a lot of people tell you to do that, but highly recommend staying away because you will get banned. It's literally, that's a federal law. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's not just getting banned on Amazon. You will go to jail. Okay. Yeah. Another poor choice that's being shown as an opportunity is purchasing wholesale name brand products on Alibaba or Timu or DH Gate. Do not do that. Those products are 100% counterfeit and 1000% going to get you banned. Retail arbitrage, online arbitrage. It's a great way to get started and sell your first $10,000, but it's a hustle. You're out there grinding every single day. It's not a solution to building a long-term legitimate business on Amazon. And the last thing I gotta emphasize is do not focus on the orange bars, how much people are selling. Anybody, literally anybody could sell products on Amazon. At the end of the day, it's how much are you bringing home? What is your net profit? And it's all about building the systems and having a foundation so that you're bringing home the cheddar. So what should you do? You have to build proper systems and SOPs to continue to grow. Think about when you make dinner. You spend all this time preparing the food and getting it all together so you can sit down and have this amazing meal, but through that process, you create all these dishes, right? And when you're finished eating, you say, oh, I'll take care of those dishes later. I don't wanna handle them right now. And the next night comes, you make an elaborate dinner, you spend the time sitting down, eating the food, and you got more dishes. And then night after night goes by and you say, I'll do those dishes tomorrow. Tomorrow. I'll do those dishes tomorrow. And a week goes by and now you have seven days worth of dishes compiled in your sink and you cannot cook anymore. There's no more room to operate. And what you do put together is disgusting because there's all dirty dishes around it. That's what it's like building a business without systems and operations. You can start growing your company and you can do good for a month, maybe two months, maybe even three months. But the lack of systems, things are going to begin to slip through the cracks. Your returns start to pile up. Your health issues begin to build and you begin to risk the growth of your business because you don't have these systems. One of the biggest problems that we hear early on for sellers is that they start selling but they don't account for inventory turns and funds needed and capital and financing and so what they find is all of a sudden they have this inventory that's sitting in Amazon they have spent all this money but they don't have any ways to pay their bills. Orange bars are growing but they don't have money left over to pay their bills. So proper systems, proper understanding of the entire workflow of your business, and that makes all the difference for someone that's gonna build a business that lasts one month, one year, a decade, and beyond. So here's how to build it the right way. Find great suppliers, make sure you're diving into their information and legitimizing that they are companies that you should be doing business with. They're not operating out of storage units, their invoices work for approval, and they're legit companies to help you grow your business. We even go deeper into that. As a matter of fact, for us, it's all about building relationships because we understand if we're reaching out, if we're building these tight knit relationships with our suppliers, they're gonna be the ones who reach out to us anytime they have a deal, anytime they have a product that they need to move or this new hot trending product, the first person they're gonna reach out to is myself or Eric because we've established and solidified our relationship with them. And one of the most important pieces of information that we need to know right from the gate with any supplier that we're working with, are they purchasing directly from the manufacturer? Are they purchasing directly from the brand? Because if they're not, then we're not gonna be purchasing those branded products from them. So it's very important to verify the supply chain with the suppliers that you're working with. And for absolutely free, in the description below, we give you our 12 point checklist that we use in our business to open some of the best accounts in the world that you can use as well. Second, you really need to pay attention to this. Amazon's changes within their rules and their fees. Their terms of service is always updating, but the cool thing is they're super transparent with their terms of service, so you can go on to Seller Central and review those changes. Also, the fees are constantly changing. Every single year in February or March, Amazon updates their fulfillment fees. You can review them on Seller Central as well. Additionally, meltables can only be sold for a certain time period, from October to April. Also, every year in the four 
fourth quarter, Amazon increases by nearly 4X their storage fees to store your items at Amazon Fulfillment Centers. All of this information is very important to understand, know how to find it, and more importantly, know how to navigate it so your business can continue to grow. Third, for long-term success, it's gonna be very important to build out teams. A lot of our success and our ability to be able to mobilize different businesses and different ventures is the fact that we've established efficient teams based on the systems that we've built. The only way you're gonna have the multiply effect is if you make multiple clones of yourself in every single facet of your business, so that way every area is covered even when you're not there. I mean, in the beginning, it's complicated. You're wearing every single hat in the business. You're managing account health, you're prepping and shipping orders, you're buying the inventory, you're dealing with customer returns. Every single piece of the company is your responsibility as an operator. But the goal is to build out these teams so then you can become an owner and focus on the growth of the company while your employees and your team are focusing on the day-to-day. -day. And it's so beautiful being an operator because it's those early stages that you're really getting a feel for what it takes to grow a business because here's where you're getting your hands dirty and you're learning every single aspect of your business. You're gonna take notes and you're gonna learn how to build out individual teams only based on the experience that you've had. So it's so critical to understand every single piece of the business early on so that way you can make clones of yourself and build out your teams to be as efficient as possible even when you're not there. And a common mistake I see is people try to skip that operator role. They immediately try to hire virtual assistants and people to operate their business from overseas. When they don't understand how to do that role themselves, they delegate that task to someone else. That person fails at that task and then they think Amazon is broken when really their systems are broken. Or they throw money at it. They think money is the band-aid. So the more money they throw into their business, the quicker things are gonna get fixed. But the fact is it's a facade. It's like those orange bars. They don't mean nothing if you're not bringing home money, net profit. And we understand the fundamental importance of building out teams. That's why for the past seven years, we put a primary focus on perfecting these teams. So that way, every single role from the buyer to the picker, to the packer, the prepper, our management, our account health teams, every single person has their role and their SOP outlined specifically for the needs of our business. We've literally invested millions of dollars building these teams and systems out, and it's the main reason why our business has been able to thrive for the past 10 years. So we talked a lot about the whiners and the things that are done incorrectly, but there's also those winners out there. And for the past 10 years, we've seen a common pattern with those who succeed in the community on Amazon. Like Lucas and Darren, for example, who may be a lot like you. They started selling on Amazon about six months ago, and they've taken the infrastructure and systems and implemented them into their business, doing it the right way, building it correctly. And now here they are, a half a year later, doing over six figures a month in profitable sales on Amazon. And if you're like them, you're definitely going to win. There's certain traits that winners and those who succeed in entrepreneurship have. So the biggest difference that I've seen in the past 10 years between those who succeed and those who quit are entrepreneurs. To me, I consider an entrepreneur someone who stays consistent, someone that stays persistent, someone that asks questions, someone that gathers information and then is willing to implement it into their business and into their strategy. Someone who's not just taking information and continuing to consume without action. I call that analysis paralysis. At the end of the day, the true entrepreneur is willing to take some risk, is willing to understand that they have to try different ways, A-B testing, in order to find what's best to grow a business, to thrive, and to have that dream life that they're looking for. So if you're looking to make a quick buck and you wanna make $50,000 in the next 30 days, this probably isn't for you. We're talking to business owners right now. People who understand that building out a lifelong profitable company is the long game. You have to be willing to take action month over month and have that long-term mindset. This isn't a microwave solution. What's the best meal you've ever had? Has it come out of a microwave? This takes preparation, it takes considerable time, but at the end 
of the day, what you have is something that's savory and delicious, that cheddar. So chances are, if you've been watching for this long, you have what it takes. But no bullshit, some people are going to lose. I just don't want you to be one of them. So if you're just getting started on Amazon and you want to learn more, we have a ton of free resources, free content, and free videos that will show you exactly the steps that you need to get going. If you're somebody that's been selling on Amazon but is ready to scale to the next level, is ready to build a business that's sustainable and profitable, send us a DM on Instagram. We'd love to talk and take your business to the next level.